This is a road car tire and it costs about 50 pounds. And this is a Formula One tire and it costs 675 pounds. So what makes them so different? And why does the F1 tire cost 13 times more? Well, I'm gonna explain what makes these tires so special and cut them open so you can see for yourself. So these two serve the same purpose. They are the squishy bit between the car and the road that allows one to grip the other. The rubber in the tread creates grip when it's pushed into the small dimples in the road. And this allows the car to accelerate, brake and corner in a variety of conditions. So what makes these tyres so different? They do look broadly the same, but actually how similar are they? We know that F1 tyres are made to strict guidelines, while road tyres have this label so we can accurately compare them. The label explains the different measurements and performance metrics of the tyre in a code of letters and numbers. Width is the first number on this label, and in this case, width is the distance from one sidewall to the other. For the road tyre, it's 215 millimetres. This is compared to the F1 tyre, which is 245 millimeters at the front and 325 millimeters at the rear. The current spec of F1 tires are slightly wider at 305 millimeters at the front and 405 millimeters at the rear. Next is the rim diameter, which is the size of the hole in the middle where the wheel fits. This is 17 inches for the road tire and 18 inches for the 2022 spec tires, but this one is a bit older and is 13 inches. The label also tells us the loads and speeds that the tire can cope with, which is 91 wide for this tire. 91 indicates the loads and Y is the speed. Looking at this number on the universal load index, 91 means that this tire can cope with 600 kilograms of load, compared to the F1 tire at over 1,000 kilograms. This is the major difference between these two tires, as the F1 tire has to be able to cope with so much downforce. Think about an F1 car braking at the end of a straight. You've got two tons of downforce plus the weight of the car, plus the braking force down on those front tires. And that is a lot more than a road tire has to deal with. As this tyre has the letter Y, that means it can run up to 186 miles an hour. Certainly not slow, but an F1 tyre has to be able to cope with speeds of over 200 miles an hour consistently. Formula 1 tyres have been exclusively supplied by Pirelli since 2011. Now, the teams don't pay Pirelli directly for the tyres, but pay a flat rate agreed between the tyre manufacturer and the FAA. This rate is actually quite hard to find, but I have it on good authority that a set of four tyres costs around two £2,200. And with 13 sets supplied to each driver during every Grand Prix weekends, the teams are getting through £57,000 worth of tyres per race. That works out to be £1.3 million for each team per season. And so the 40,000 individual tyres Pirelli produce over the course of a season for F1 are worth £22 million. On the other side of this comparison, road tyres are manufactured by a whole number of companies from around the world, including some of the massive companies like Michelin, Good Goodyear, Hankook and Bridgestone who made this. And these companies produce a lot of tyres. 2.2 billion were produced in 2021 alone. And using our 50 pound reference, which is cheap, that totals to 110 billion pounds. The numbers are also very different when it comes to their shelf life, but this is by design. Pirelli's F1 tires are designed to only go so far before they lose performance to keep the racing exciting and interesting. This means that the Pirelli F1 tires will last between 60 and 200 miles. Of course, they do have to cope with loads of up to 5G throughout their lifespan so it's not from lack of trying. But it wasn't that long ago that F1 tyres used to last an entire race distance. On the other hand, your average road tyre will only experience loads of up to 1G during its life, but its performance is equally as impressive, just for different reasons. F1 tyres are obviously built for ultimate performance and grip, but normal road tyres are built for comfort, longevity, and to be adaptable. A road tyre has to work in the dry, in the rain, on freezing cold tarmac, hot tarmac, gravel roads, and the list goes on. And they do this for years. Tire manufacturers advise that tires should be changed after 20,000 miles, which is at least 100 times more than an F1 tire lasts. But a normal road tire should be able to go over 60,000 miles without the driver noticing them. And at the cheap end, this is all for only 50 pound, and that is incredible. But what's interesting is that they are constructed in a very similar process. Both F1 and road tires are made of a mixture of natural and synthetic rubbers, alongside up to 15 reinforcing materials to create the rubber compound. However, their ratios are slightly different. While normal road tires are 20% natural rubber and 80% synthetic, F1 tires are 10% natural rubber and 90% synthetic. The higher synthetic rubber content gives the F1 tire more strength, more heat resistance, and more consistent grip compared to the road tire. And both contain carbon black 
which adds strength and gives them their color, as rubber is actually naturally white. But as you would expect, they include different materials to suit their requirements. For example, road tires include antioxidants to minimize the effects of oxygen and silica to reduce rolling resistance, which helps fuel economy. It's hard to say for sure, but F1 tires won't include as many antioxidants as they don't last long enough for this to be a problem. As for silica, well, they'll have less of that because they want that rolling resistance to create as much grip as possible. The power of the F1 car will overcome this resistance, so it should didn't really affect performance. All those materials are mixed together at high temperature in what looks like a massive blender. This compound is then rolled into sheets and wrapped around a circular drum to mold it into shape. A layer of fabric, usually Kevlar or polyester, called ply, will be added to the mold to reinforce the inner face of the tire. Strips of metal wires called bead are then laid at the edges to strengthen and keep the tire attached to the wheel rim. And F1 tires will have more layers of bead and ply to protect the shoulder and the side walls against a much higher lateral load. This structure forms the carcass that the tread is later attached to. For the tread, the rubber compound is combined with more layers of ply to reinforce the face of the tire to limit deformation at speed. The tread layer is then pressed onto the carcass to form the overall tire. The final stage is for the combined tire to be placed in a press machine that cures the tire into its final shape and then adds the tread pattern using pressurized steam. The pressurized steam in the machine causes vulcanization and vulcanization is a chemical reaction that transforms the rubber from a weak sticky substance into the elastic stronger material that forms the working tire. For F1 tires, only intermediates and wets will have a tread pattern, while all road tires will have that pattern so they can work in all conditions. So really the only difference in the manufacturing process is that the F1 tire will have more reinforcing materials to help them cope with the higher loads that they experience. But it's in the testing and development of the tires where the differences really show. The indoor testing consists of pushing the tires to be on the limits of F1 to make sure they hold up under pressure. They fit the tire to a machine called a dynamometer. This runs a tire on a sandpaper like roller with a known grip level so they can measure the grip throughout acceleration, braking and cornering. They run at speeds of 280 miles an hour, subjected to temperatures over 300 degrees and lateral loads of 1000 kilograms for 20 times longer than they're expected to run during a race. And while road tires are tested in similar ways, these tests are not as extreme. A dynamometer is used to test the speeds and loads of the tires can take like an F1 tire. But unlike an F1 tire, the tire is tested on how they will cope with all sorts of weather conditions, especially in the wet and snow, alongside stopping distances and how much noise they make. All to make sure they are suitable for a wide range of vehicles, as one model of road tire can be used on anything from a small hatchback to a large SUV. And this is where the price difference comes in. The F1 tire is a specialist bit of kit, researched by specialists using specialist equipment, and they all cost money. So I'm gonna go outside now to open up both tires and look at what's inside. First up, I'm gonna cut open the road tire, then I'm gonna cut open the F1 tire. We're gonna break it up, see how deep the tread is on both tires, see what the construction's like inside, see what materials are used inside, and really get a good comparison between the two tires. Okay, so let's compare these two tyres now and see what the differences between them actually are. I guess, first of all, the first thing to look at is the difference between the tread. You can obviously see the steel material in here on both of the tyres, but the tread on the road car rubber is much deeper than it is on the F1 rubber. Now, this is, of course, a used F1 tyre, so it will have reduced uh, the thickness somewhat, but there's still plenty more meat on the road tire. And then I guess the other big difference here is just the profile of the tire. There's actually a lot more meat here on, this, on the side coming up to the shoulder of the tire. As we come around the side, it's really, really interesting to see how thin the shoulder is on the F1 rubber going into the sidewall. It's only, you know, four or five millimeters thick here compared to the big chunky road tire. And I suppose that makes sense because the road tire probably has to endure being driven, you know, over bumps, sometimes into curbs, over potholes. So you want it to be much thicker, whereas the racing circuit is of course much smoother. Now the F1 tire will of course be going through much more significant loads, but it's in a much more consistent way. And then once we get down to the bead of the tire, yes, it is a little bit bigger 
on the F1 rubber, but actually it's not that much bigger or thicker than it is on the road car tire. So quite a few differences there between the profile and the shape of the tires, but maybe not quite as much as you might think. How does a $5,000 road car engine compare to a $10 million F1 engine? Well, if you want to find out, click on this video just down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.